Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week you can see I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence. In fact, I'm going to be talking about UNESCO's newly released AI competency framework for teachers. So if you're interested in hearing about what are the main principles behind the AI competency framework from UNESCO for teachers, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I thought that I would demonstrate this week how I analyze different documents, especially documents that, you know, are hundreds of pages along. So very exciting announcements last week. In fact, lots of news on the AI front. And one of them was that UNESCO released an AI competency framework for teachers, and they also released one for students. So this week, I'm going to focus on the teachers because that aligns with so many of the principles in my newly released book, AI Powered Pedagogy, which I released in June. So how do I analyze documents? At the moment, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is probably the more accurate large language model compared with all of the other language models. So, so what I've got is the PDF and I've dropped it in here and I'm about to uh, type in some instructions on what I want to know. I've also actually read the paper as well. So I do highly recommend everybody reading the paper, but I just wanted to demonstrate like sometimes how we can use AI to help summarize large documents and then cross check the suggestions that the large language model comes up with. I've got the AI Composity Framework for Teachers from UNESCO. And I'm just going to say, can you please, because I'm polite, can you please give me a comprehensive, let's say, summary of this with all of the important, and I'm going to say principles. And then let's see what it comes up with. So pressing enter. And it takes a little while to actually analyze the document. Okay, here we go. Here's a comprehensive review. So overview, let's just start reading, even though the large language model is still generating the answer. Overview, UNESCO's first AI competency framework for teachers designed to guide the development of national AI competency frameworks, inform teacher training programs and help design assessment parameters. So that's interesting. I might ask um, a question about the assessment parameters. It outlines 15 competences. Yep, I can verify that because I've read the document. Five dimensions, three progression levels. Yep, that's a really nice uh, picture as well of the progression levels in the rubric. Uh, so I do highly recommend that you have a look at that. Now, let's have a look at the key principles. Ensure inclusive digital futures and human-centered approach. Beautiful. Protect teachers' rights and iteratively redefine teachers' roles. Absolutely. I think iteration is really important because it keeps us adaptive to this, this fast-changing landscape of AI. Promote trustworthy and environmentally sustainable AI for education. Ensure applicability for all teachers and reflect digital evolution. Support lifelong professional learning for teachers. Okay, yes, I can verify that this is what I've read in my understanding. Uh, there are five composity dimensions, and I might go to the actual document in a moment so that you can actually see the rubric because it's quite nice. So these five different dimensions, human-centered mindset, absolutely. We always have to keep human in the loop when we're using any kind of AI tool. There has to be ethical considerations of AI, and we have to teach our students about the ethics of AI and also academic integrity and honesty. There's AI foundations and applications. AI pedagogy. As you know, AI pedagogy for me is fundamental and foundational for all teachers. And then professional development, AI professional development. So I really like in their rubric, they have the three progression levels for each of these five competencies. So the first level is acquire, the second level is deepen, and the third level is create. I love those progression levels and I think they actually do align with Bloom's taxonomy and really encourage that third level of innovative use and using creativity. There's key competencies as well. There's implementation strategies in the document. So how do we actually implement this? Regulate AI, ensure trustworthy AI tools for education, a fundamental principle. 
uh, enable, build enabling policies and conditions for AI use in education. And I always encourage schools to actually co-create through the design thinking process, a unified AI policy for the school that takes into consideration the context of the school and the culture as well. So enabling policies, formulate localized AI competency frameworks. So that's having that co-created unified AI policy for your school, but takes into consideration your local context. Number four, design comprehensive teacher training programs. Absolutely. And develop contextual performance-based assessment tools. I love that. Okay, so when I read this document, I thought, wow, this is really similar to the principles that I have in my book, uh, AI Pad Pedagogy, that I released in June. So I thought, well, why don't we compare it? So let's jump over there. So here we've just jumped over to another tab and I've dropped in my entire PDF of my book. I've dropped in the UNESCO competency framework for teachers. And I said, can you compare these two documents for similarities and differences and highlight the main key principles of each document and using Claude 3.5 sonnet again. So certainly, so here we go. Here are the similarities between my book and the ideas. So focus on AI in education, right? Looking at how to really build teacher competencies. Number two, ethics. We can't use any AI tool without having some kind of ethical considerations. There needs to be a staged approach or some kind of multi-level staged approach to AI adoption. So I have my four key stages of survive, strive, thrive, and arrive, and that you constantly go through this, this cyclical movement in AI adoption. With UNESCO, they look at acquire, deepen, and create as the different levels and stages. Uh, pedagogical in integration. I'm so glad that UNESCO has talked about pedagogical integration, and I specifically look for terms like inquiry-based learning. And they do promote an inquiry-based learning approach, which I'm so happy about. Number five, professional development is key. So my book, as well as the AI competency framework for teachers, emphasize the need for ongoing teacher training and development. And we all need to ensure there's a human-centered approach. So human in the loop, as well as maintaining human agency. So the differences, let's have a look. Scope, UNESCO frameworks more focused on defining specific competencies, absolutely, whereas mine is a broader guide for institutions, teachers, and students in those three groups to integrate AI into education. Uh, UNESCO framework is more formally structured, absolutely, while I follow a more narrative approach, absolutely, I wrote it more like a story. Uh, the audience, so UNESCO's framework is primarily aimed at policymakers, educational institutions, Okay, so if I look at number three, the audience, UNESCO's framework primarily aimed at policymakers, while mine's more for educators, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that because I talk about how it's so important to actually take into consideration key AI principles as well as key pedagogical principles when we're adopting any kind of AI tool. And I think that it could be aimed at policymakers as well. Uh, here we go. Practical application. Wathos book has, offers more practical examples and case studies. Absolutely. And then the difference, UNESCO's framework placed more emphasis on policy development and institutional frameworks. Absolutely. I have a section on institutional frameworks, but I actually also talk about how, how teachers can streamline their workflow using AI and how learners can use AI to enhance their learning. So here we already know about the key principles. Uh, from UNESCO and the framework. And then here, so let's have a look. Here are the key principles from my book. Human oversight, data protection, ethical use, empowering users, transforming pedagogy. Now, they're the key principles, I would say, of AI use, if we're using any AI, but I actually want to harmonize AI use with pedagogical principles. And so I marry these key principles with six pedagogical principles. But let me ask that follow-up question. What are Wathel's pedagogical principles? Okay, let me just adjust that. And then let's see 
if it will pick up. Look, I've got a typo there, but I'm sure that it's still going to <laughs> ignore that typo and tell me the six pedagogical principles. So let's see what it comes up with. And here it is. So these are pretty important that were missed out in the initial summary. So those pedagogical principles that we have to harmonize with AI principles are that it needs to be concept based. It needs to be inquiry based. We need to be inclusive and equitable. We need to promote a collaborative environment. The pedagogy needs to be learner centered and learner driven and we need to evidence learning. And that was not there. So it says Wathall emphasizes the pedagogical principles are not just theoretical ideals, but practical tools. Absolutely. So if we just go back then. So originally Claude, the, Claude just summarized, these are the AI principles, but these five AI principles, I believe should be harmonized with these six pedagogical principles. And that is what AI powered pedagogy is. So let's just see what else Claude said at the end. Wathall also emphasizes the importance of institutional frameworks, developing ethical learners, enhancing creativity and critical thinking through AI, the cyclical nature of AI adoption, which I talked about great, I'm glad it mentioned it, and create and crafting effective prompts for AI interaction. So I thought that was so interesting. I really enjoyed reading UNESCO's AI competency framework for teachers. I highly recommend you read the document. It's a bit long, but you can always, you know, skim it first, get the ideas, then use an AI model like Claude, which tends to hallucinate less than others to kind of summarize and give you some of the key ideas. Oh, so before we go, I was going to show you the rubric that is in the UNESCO framework for teachers. So Give me a second. OK, so here is the actual document and here is the rubric that has that progression, acquire, deep and create. I love those three levels. And then the five different principles and aspects that UNESCO has identified as being really important. So human centered mindset, ethics of AI, AI foundations and applications, AI pedagogy and AI for professional development. I love this rubric and I'll be you know, referring to this rubric, I think, and in a lot of my collaborations with different schools. So thank you so much for joining me this week. Please have a read of the UNESCO Competency Framework for Teachers. I'm going to be looking at the Competency Framework for students next, and I hope to see you next time.